All right. So a Redditor had a question about um, changing the scale of an instance of an object in Maya. Um, not 100% sure exactly what they meant by the question, uh, but based off of what I think they're asking, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick demo of some cool things to learn about the uh, duplicate special. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this guy over, uh, go to edit, duplicate, special, and I'm going to click this little box here to bring up the options menu. In this options menu, I'm going to translate it over by three, and I'm going to put the scale on the y-axis as negative one. And we'll see what that's going to do. And then I got to make sure that I click instance over here. Go ahead and hit duplicate special. And now we get this guy. And as you can see, um, it's it's flipped because I have the scale changed to negative one. I can change that back at any time to one or whatever I want. Uh, and then once I'm done making my adjustments, um, if I just click on the gizmo, like on one of the axes, ax axes right here, just I'll click on the Y axis right there and then I'll just go ahead and hit control shift D which is the shortcut for duplicate special it's gonna repeat that last duplication that I made from this object starting with this one so if I just hit control shift D control shift D and keep hitting it over and over again now I've got all these objects here if I go back to the original and I start messing with the shape you know obviously they're all going to do the same thing if I want to mess with the shape on one of them it'll mess the shape with all of them and if I want to go back in here and change the scale back to one I still can I can do anything I want to it and it's still gonna retain what I'm doing to the original or really any of the other guys over here so hope that's helpful uh, it's also possible to do this without instancing if you want to actually just make copies real quick uh, it's actually a little bit faster with making copies um, sorry if you can hear that my headphones sliding against my zipper. I'm going to move that out of the way. Whoops. Okay. Uh, so if I wanted to duplicate this and move it over, I could hit Control D and move it over and then rotate it or do whatever I want to it and then maybe scale negative one, whatever. And then if I click back on the gizmo one more time, I can just do Shift D and it'll repeat that same transformation over and over again. Um, but without even having to press control D in the first place to duplicate it or even going up to edit <clears throat> and uh, duplicate or duplicate special what I can do let's say I want to make this into a radial shape right here uh, instead of just actually no I'll show that in a minute okay so uh, with this guy I'm gonna go ahead and just hold the shift button and I'm going to drag this out in this direction and let's say I want to I don't know, I want to rotate this by 15 degrees every iteration. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the J key or hold the J key with my rotate up and I'll snap that over by 15 degrees. And then as long as I go ahead and just click back on the gizmo one more time, don't move it, don't drag it, just click on it once uh, and then hit shift D over and over again. It'll go ahead and make those duplications for me. Now, of course, since these are not instances, I can't go back in to the original and mess with this guy here. So you may want to stick with using instances depending on what you want it for. But another really cool like way to use this is let's say I've got, I don't know, let's, I'm just going to give you a cool use case scenario for this thing. I'm just going to delete this guy. I want to make like a, like a nut or like a bolt head or something like that. Um, so it's going to be a little involved. I want it to look nice. So I'm going to go ahead and basically delete everything except for this one face here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some edge loops. Uh, that should be good enough. I'm actually going to do one more. Let's, let's do this. All right, cool. And then I'm going to just scale this up a little or uh, bring this up a little bit give me more of like an arc or arched shape bring this guy up all right and now what I can do is since this pivot is still centered from where the original object was I can just grab my rotation tool and I'm gonna hold shift 
to, to clone it, I'm going to hold J to constrain those uh, the iterations to 15 degrees. And I'm just going to pull this over 60 degrees. And then I'm going to hit Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, and one more. So now I've got the top of the nut here. If I can go ahead and just combine these. Ignore the quick shelf. There's You can combine it your own way as well if you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and merge these uh, verts here together. So now I can do something like this. I just grab this, shift extrude it, bring it up, flatten it down, scale it in, and then do a circularize. Now I've got the top of my nut here. And if I just add some supporting edges here, and then go ahead and smooth that. Cool, now I've got this cool shape here. So that's just no, another way you can use that shift duplicate uh, repetition to give you those same transforms in a practical way. There's many, many other ways you can do it. This is just one cool way to do it. Uh, okay, hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for watching.